Okay, hi there and uh, welcome to a video where we're going to take a look at a suggested A star exam answer to a question on the impact of a significant increase in the minimum wage on the UK economy. Just a few weeks ago, the government announced the living wage, effectively the minimum wage for over 25s, adult workers will rise by 6% from £8.21 to £8.72 per hour. And many countries, certainly most European countries, have a legal pay floor which an employer or a business cannot legally undercut. So we'll take a look at how to write an answer to this question, assess the argument that both the short and long-term performance of the UK economy will be helped by a significant increase in the minimum wage, 25 mark question. So here's a chart from The Guardian showing what's happened to the national living wage, effectively the minimum wage. Uh, £8.72, the, there are rates, lower rates for younger workers, all the way down to £4.15 for workers who are classified as apprentices. The key to writing a good answer, a high-level answer, is to build chains of reasoning, to build a chunky knowledge application analysis mark, and then obviously develop the point with evaluation. So in the short term, Keynesian economists argue that a 6% increase in the nominal value of the minimum wage provides a stimulus to consumer spending, aggregate demand, and hence to GDP growth in the UK. In other words, a minimum wage increase could stimulate short-term growth. And this is because a higher pay floor will lift the gross weekly incomes, the earnings of people in relatively low-paid jobs, such as catering assistants, care workers, and people in retail. So good use of knowledge there to explain what a relatively low paid job is and, and some examples of it. Families on low disposable incomes tend to have a high marginal propensity to consume. They tend to spend a high percentage of any extra income. I've done a bit of number crunching here. A 51p rise in the minimum wage could increase wages by about £90 a month if you're working a given number of hours, perhaps close to £1,000 a year. And if this extra income was spent, this the, this could then cause an outward shift in aggregate demand to provide a boost to Philip to UK GDP growth, which has actually been slowing below 2% since 2014, in part due to Brexit uncertainty. Some families, of course, may spend the increase in income. Others may choose to save any gain in income, which is again important given the low household savings ratio at the moment, which is less than 5% of disposable income, or they might use some of the extra in income to pay off debt. Unsecured debts often carry a very high rate of interest and penalise vulnerable households on low incomes. So the essence of my argument here is that minimum wage going up by 6% could provide quite a big stimulus to demand, could allow households to save a bit more and pay off debt, helping the performance of the economy. Uh, most students would put in a, an analysis diagram. This will be a fairly solid diagram showing an outward shift in aggregate demand. I'll show you in a minute how you need to develop this diagram to get to the higher levels of analysis. But an increase in AD could in theory lead to higher growth in the economy. But then you need to evaluate the point. Now you need to evaluate the point you've made. So my argument here is that there are risks involved in terms of arguing there's going to be a big increase in demand. A counter argument, good phrase to use, is that by raising the minimum wage by 6% in nominal terms, it's unlikely to provide a significant short-term lift to demand. This is because some employers, uh, perhaps retailers, where wages are a high percentage of their costs, they may reduce the number of hours offered to employees in a bid to control costs. A drop in hours worked will then limit the earnings available for people in low-paid work. A link with this is evidence that a sizable portion of people on, on or at the minimum wage remain in working poverty and therefore must claim universal credit. So a higher minimum wage could lead some of those families to see a fall in their welfare payments as they're clawed back, therefore reducing the positive impact on disposable incomes. And if a higher minimum wage also leads to an increase in cost push inflation, uh, then rising consumer prices will mean a 6% rise in the minimum wage in nominal terms is less generous when expressed in real terms. Just do a simple calculation to make the point. If inflation, for example, rises to 3% above target, a 6% rise in the minimum wage is only a 3% real term increase. That's the evaluation point. Now, developing the diagram is important. This would be a solid 
you know, level two diagram is showing a shift in aggregate demand, but of course there could also be an inward shift of aggregate supply, which has the effect of dampening down the growth effect of a minimum wage increase, but increasing the potential risks to inflation. And that will be shown well by that diagram. That will be a good diagram to use in your exam. My second point uh, focuses more on the long term. Some economists argue that increasing the minimum wage can benefit the UK in the long term by improving productivity growth and also planned investment. This might be slightly counterintuitive, but there is something called the efficiency wage theory, which argues that paying workers above a low free market level wage gives those people a psychological lift, a boost to their morale, and incentivizes more people to engage in job search. So people, the opportunity cost of not working goes up and people may become more productive because they feel they're getting a fair, uh, fair hour's pay for an hour's work. If you increase the pay floor, that creates a wedge between the incomes you can get in, in a job, in work, and welfare benefits claimed during a period of economic inactivity. So that could cause the labour supply to expand. It might also encourage an inflow of migration of workers, and that will be helpful in terms of uh, reducing, alleviating labour shortages in, in industries such as healthcare, construction, hospitality, tourism. And if labour supply and output per worker go up, that causes an outward shift of long and aggregate supply and therefore helps the UK achieve stronger trend growth, which in turn will raise per capita incomes. If there's a high level of demand lifted by rising wages, then that could stimulate an increase in business investment according to the accelerator theory, particularly in sectors maybe such as retail and leisure, which have been struggling recently. Okay, then you evaluate that point. So there are fears that a big rise in the minimum wage could lead to higher costs for businesses, causing a fall in profits, which then leads to a reduction in planned investment and jobs. The British Chamber of Commerce has argued that businesses may cut back on training uh, because they have less money spare, which in the medium term, again, could hold back productivity growth. And not every business which has to pay the minimum wage is able to pass on higher costs to the consumers, particularly when demand is price elastic. Uh, maybe they're under intense competitive pressure from overseas. So a lot depends on the extent to which other costs for businesses might be going down as the minimum wage is going up. So our, can stores negotiate better rents with their landlords? Perhaps there could be a fall in corporation tax or national insurance payments for businesses just to limit the impact of an increase in the minimum wage. In the long run, opponents of a minimum wage rise claim that some businesses will outsource some of their production overseas while labour costs are lower. Obviously that's damaging to the economy in the long term. My own view, it's, it's hard to see which industries this applies to in the UK context. If you look at the minimum wage in the global garment industry in 2018, clearly minimum wages are way lower in, than in the UK. In Ethiopia, $26 uh, per month. In Kenya, $200. In Turkey, near European, uh, near neighbours of the European Union, $340 a month, $90 a week. Well, will some production shift to Turkey and China and Thailand? Possibly. But what's left of the garment sector in the UK? What percentage of production actually is, is garments? Some people use labour demand and labour supply diagrams when answering this kind of question, which is fine. And of course, in theory, a minimum wage, shown here above the equilibrium wage W1, leads to a fall in employment to E3 and an expansion of labour supply to E2, causing, if you like, some unemployment, some excess supply of labour. So that will be a solid diagram showing the potential risk of a minimum wage. My strong advice, though, is to develop the diagram. Don't leave it there. So, for example, you might change the elasticity of the labour demand curve to show the impact on employment. Or you could argue that if a minimum wage increases demand for goods and services, then labour demand could shift out from LD1 to LD2, in which case you still have some unemployment, but actually employment could even be higher than it was before the minimum wage was introduced. Now, crucially, in a 25-mark essay, you will definitely need to produce a final reasoned 
comment of final recent judgment to your essay. Don't leave the essay hanging by a thread. Produce a final comment. Here's my attempt at that. Unemployment in the UK is at a 45-year low of 3.8%. Good knowledge. Inflationary pressures in the labour market and the wider economy remain subdued. Wages growing by less than 3%. Inflation less than 2%. Employment records, employment rates at a record high, but for most people, real wages have been stagnant or falling for more than a decade. And a lot of households have at least, with at least one person in, in a job, are classified as being in working poverty. In other words, the UK economy is performing pretty well. Unemployment's low, inflation's low, but there's a high problem of working poverty. Therefore, although there are some risks, some downsides from lifting the minimum wage, my view is that the medium-term benefits are more persuasive. And the government, a major employer in its own right, of course, with the NHS, they can move to lower costs in other areas. They could reform business rates. They could uh, reduce national insurance contributions, for example. Thousands of businesses already recognise that paying workers an equitable wage for an hour's work is both fair and makes commercial sense. Indeed, well over 6,000 employers, some big ones, IKEA, Aldi, Everton FC, they have committed to paying a voluntary real living wage of £9.30 outside London, £10.30 inside the capital. Look how I finished my essay. Obviously, I'm in favour of the minimum wage. You can see this from my, my points. The long-term health of the economy depends on making work pay and lifting productivity. A higher minimum wage can help to achieve both. Now, others will have a different view. Others will say that we need to raise productivity first before we lift the minimum wage. My argument is that uh, the causation can be reversed. Aldi is a really good example. I'm sure many of you follow this business for studying the retail sector. Fast-growing German retailer, deep discounter. Um, Aldi pays the highest wages nationally in the supermarket sector. And they've just announced an increase in their hourly pay rates. Um, what is it? £9.40 nationally, £10.90 inside the M25. A significant increase there in, in in wage rates for people working in all these stores. There we go. Uh, there's my take on an A-star exam answer to a question on the minimum wage. Thank you.